Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for today's proclamation of the good news is the beginning of the Gospel of Mark that starts this way. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You may be seated. Beginnings are often filled with expectation, of possibility, of hope, of the the peace that's to arrive as everything we've been waiting for, finally is here. Mark begins the gospel with hope, with expectations of peace, with everything that they have been waiting for that is going to be fulfilled. And he has this very powerful phrase to start his book. The beginning. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And as I've looked at this phrase, I've often wondered what the scope of this phrase is. What is he beginning? One way to look at this is that the whole book is a beginning. And where does the story continue? With you and with me, with the church, as we continue to go on and share the good news of Jesus. The beginning, the starting point, in the revelation of the Son of God that arrives in Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Mark, as we share this story among us, we continue the story. We become the witnesses, the testimony that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and that he has brought to us the victory of the kingdom of heaven. One support for that kind of scope for this phrase is the fact that the Gospel of Mark, in its earliest forms, did not have a resurrection appearance of Jesus. It begins here, and then the end of the Gospel of Mark is the women leaving the tomb in fear. All the other Gospels have a physical bodily resurrection appearance of Jesus. The earliest forms of Mark don't seem to have that. Does that mean that there is no bodily resurrection in the Gospel of Mark? Not at all. It means that you and I are the telling of that story. When we tell people about the Gospel of Jesus Christ, and we finish it with, and the women left the tomb in fear, and they're like, and what's next? And you say, you and I, we are next. As we share the good news that Jesus Christ, the one that was in the tomb, is risen from the dead. Mark anticipates, I think, that the church shares the story and gives people the confidence that as we live, you can live as well. So this book is a beginning, but you and I, we are the story that continues as we share the resurrection of Jesus Christ with one another. We no longer live in fear. We live with the confidence that the one that is the one who was and the one who will be, is risen from the dead. So that's one way to see the scope of this phrase, the beginning, that you and I are the story that continues. Another way to see the scope of this phrase in the beginning, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is what comes right after that phrase. It's the Old Testament. It's Isaiah. And Malachi quotes this phrase from Isaiah. And he's also making some reference to what's going on in the book of Exodus. Mark captures in this quote from Isaiah the whole scope of the Old Testament and that the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is found in the Old Testament. That the Old Testament is pregnant with the promises of the hope that is to come and the messenger of God that announces the Savior is to arrive. That's a a wonderful way to see how the Gospel of Mark begins because, you know, Matthew and Luke, they have nativity scenes. They have the baby Jesus being born. Mark starts with John in the wilderness. Jesus is a full-grown man. It's really hard to do a Christmas pageant with the Gospel of Mark. It, It just isn't there. Except that we do get the the pregnancy of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, we're referred back to the Old Testament. 
We're told to see how all of these things that have been written are coming true. That everything that the people of the Old Testament had been told to look forward to, to anticipate with hope, all those pieces that seem to be separate and, and distant and discordant in the Old Testament, all those promises that people had no idea how they would get fulfilled, they all find their answer in the arrival of Jesus Christ. So one way to see the scope of this phrase in the beginning, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is to have us go backwards, to look to the Old Testament and how Christ in the Old Testament has been there all along. That Word of God, it's there. And now the Gospel of Mark is going to show how that Word that we've been finding in the Old Testament is now becoming flesh and dwelling among us and announcing, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So that's one way to see the scope of this phrase, the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, to go back to the Old Testament. But I also want to show you that Mark, I think, is looking at all of these possibilities when he has this phrase. And here's the next way to see this phrase, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's to look at where Isaiah took us and where the people of Jerusalem and of of Judah are going when Mark begins his gospel. Where does Isaiah take us? Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Isaiah takes us back to Exodus, the wilderness, when the people that had been enslaved by Pharaoh are led by Moses across the Red Sea on dry ground, and then they're brought to the wilderness, a place where they must be guided by a pillar of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night. It's a place where they must be fed and learn that man will not live by the bread of this world alone, but must live by the word of God. The manna arrives. The wilderness becomes a place where the crooked paths that seem to go nowhere finally find their way when the people trust in God to bring them into the promised land. The book of Exodus is about that guiding, that leading, through the wilderness and discovering that it is only by God that we will make our way to the promise. That's where Isaiah looks back when he reminds the people about the wilderness. But Isaiah is also looking to a time, even in his own book, King Hezekiah was this king of strength and might. An earthquake had come, the Assyrians had been pushed back. There is a time of confusion in the book of Isaiah about what to expect. And Isaiah, throughout his whole book, leads the people to say, expect more. Expect more. Because God is still at work among his people. Emmanuel, God is with us. And then we have the wilderness that John the Baptist is preaching in. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him. John was bringing people out to the wilderness, out of their lives of comfort, out of their lives where everything made sense, and bringing them out to the wilderness where everything that was true was now visible. This world is a wilderness. And without the hope of God, that is all that it is. But as they were brought to the wilderness to see this vast emptiness, they also then heard God filling this place of wilderness with his words of promise. When John says, After me comes one who is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. And their vision then is lifted up from just what they see with John wearing the camel's hair and eating the strange food of the locusts and wild honey, and their vision is brought more from what they can see to what God is promising. There is one who is to come that is bringing more. In the wilderness, the people learn that God is bringing more. He is bringing the hope of God's answers into this world. And the rest of the book of Mark is Jesus arriving 
in his journeys on the road and at the dinners of tax collectors and sinners, he arrives at people's wilderness. He goes through places of geography that are wilderness. He goes through places of spirituality that are empty and a wilderness. He goes to people's personal lives where they are lost and where they are broken. And to every wilderness that Jesus arrives to, he lets people know that God is bringing more, that he is bringing hope, he is bringing peace, that he is bringing life. And finally, he goes to the greatest wilderness that we know. He goes to the cross. And everything that the eye sees is sad and empty, broken and discordant. Nothing seems to fit at that cross. But Jesus is there. So we know that death is not all that we will see. We know that we will see more. Because in every wilderness that God arrives to, he leads the people to see that by the word of the Lord, life will endure. Because the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. God will bring us to wildernesses. He will lift our eyes to see both what is in this world, and he will lift our eyes to see what his word brings, hope and salvation. Whatever wilderness you may find yourself at now, I want you to know that this world is not just what you see with your eyes. The world is more, because the word of the Lord is present in this wilderness. And as God led the people of Israel with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, God, even so, through his Holy Spirit, will lead us through this time. He will lead us to see that with the word of the Lord we will endure. Because with that great wilderness of the cross, Jesus Christ there suffered. He was placed into the tomb. And now you and I get to tell the story. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ may have been in the wilderness, but now the story continues. It continues with you and with me as we share the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand. May this give you the confidence to make your way through the wilderness now, and may you have the confidence to know that even now, in these moments of wilderness, God is doing more. He is bringing life. Amen. Will you please stand? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would help our eyes to see your word leading and guiding us through this time of wilderness. Usher us into the promise so that we would have the witness, the opportunity to be a witness to others that are in their own wilderness, that God is making the crooked paths straight. Amen.